Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the end of the day. Not the end of everything, but the end of this day. And um, I'm very happy to be here tonight. Uh, thanks to Holger. Thank you for that day. It was inspiring. It was uh, tiring. Um, and I hope we have uh, something really special for you now um, on board. And let me start with a very small personal story. When I came here to Frankfurt this morning by ICE, um, I read, in order to prepare myself, a report that was published um, just recently on the World Economic Forum on new plastics economy. Rethinking the future of plastics. And you see there's a, lots of thoughts that I brainstorming that I wrote down. But then something happened on page 14. It struck me one number. It's 8 million tons of waste plastics dumped in the oceans every year. Jesus, the number's too big to grasp. What is 8 million tons? 8 million tons means that during this day, starting from 10 o'clock this morning, 7,500 tons of waste plastic have been dumped in the oceans today. Then I found another number. There's a very popular project right now, Ocean Cleanup. You might have heard of it. And if you're a member on Facebook, you probably get all these posts by Ocean Cleanup. And they say, they claim they can clean up three tons, not per second, not per minute, but per week. Three tons per week. Then I got up off the train, I grabbed my jacket, plastic. I grabbed my suitcase, plastic. My rucksack, plastic. My suit, plastic. Plastic all over me. I think my watch is the only thing that's not made of plastic. So the next four people I want to invite on stage, I hope they can relieve me of my pain. This is really sad, I thought, and it was really painful. And I would love to have people, to have those four speakers come on stage, and I hope they can relieve me of my pain. So first to um, enter the stage is Mr. Fritz Barth. Welcome. Um, Managing Director of the ISC3 International Sustainable Chemistry Collaborative Center in Bonn. Um, then next is, uh, I don't know if I've got it right, yeah, Fernando J. Gomez, um, Head of Chemistry and Advanced Materials Industry World Economic Forum. <laughs> next is Magnus Needham from Nurian's Coin Chemical Industry Holding, CEO. And last but not least, Daniela Russo, CEO and co-founder of Think Beyond Plastic. Daniela, I was shocked this morning, actually. Uh, I never realized. I saw all these pictures uh, on TV, of course, and on the internet, that it is bad. But the numbers, I thought, well, we'll never be able to clean up the mess or make any difference. Can you help me? Stefan, you have to stop this because you're depressing me, okay? okay? First of all, there is nothing wrong with plastics. You're describing the end of a love affair our society has had with a material that has done a lot very valuable and good things. It's helped us preserve natural materials, cork, leather, silk, all of these things have been preserved because of plastic. Uh, transporting goods long distances in plastic helps save CO2. We care about these uh, indicators. Um, what we're observing right now is unintended consequences of a material that we have loved so much that we have overused to, to, to the extent that we are now noticing that we can no longer continue in the same way. And in fact, we're, we're discovering that we're using it in a totally unintended way because this is a valuable material. It's material hundreds of millions of years in the making, which now is being used to throw stuff away. And somehow plastic is equated with cheap materials that are intended to, to be discarded and wasted. So the whole point of the circular economy for plastics or the new plastics initiative is to preserve value in these molecules and to make sure that they get circulated at the system at their highest value. 
The problem with this is that the materials that are currently used, the chemicals that are currently used in the plastics production are for the large part toxic. They have unintended consequences on human health. When we incinerate plastic, we actually breathe material that has been uh, released in the air as toxic particulate matter. When we recycle it, we, for the most part, downcycle it and just make another type of plastic out of it. So the real big question is, as we transition towards the circular economy in general, not just for plastics, what does that mean for the materials, for the plastics, and for the chemicals that circulate in this ever-increasing cycle? And the reason we are optimistic at Think Beyond Plastic is because we believe that the new plastics economy initiative, which is represented by some of the largest brands in the world, is writing the biggest purchase order for innovation and entrepreneurship now. Because what we're looking for is an opportunity to innovate materials, chemicals, on an unprecedented level, where we would start rethinking about the materials we use today in the plastic production and start incorporating biobenign materials, sustainably derived, sustainably manufactured, with a sustainable end of life. Same is true with chemicals and same is true with product packaging, looking into delivering product without packaging or with minimum plastic footprint. So Think Beyond Plastic is dedicated to that, solving that problem. We're an innovation accelerator. We build an innovation ecosystem because we feel that for that kind of innovation to thrive, it's not just enough to identify it or throw money at it. This type of innovation ecosystem requires the networking and support of industry, innovators, and entrepreneurs. And we're in the middle of it. We work on chemistry, we work on sustainable chemistry. Plastics is one application of it. There are many others. But our goal is to advance these solutions to create market um, acceptable forms for them to exist in the marketplace and work with business and industry to fund them. Okay, sounds hopeful. It is. <laughs> Magnus, um, is there anything you can say from an industry point of view is it depressing or is it hopeful? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was always about to say, I think just like her here, because I think we've heard a lot, uh, a lot of truths here also. I think sometimes we need new perspectives into debates, as we know. Um, that's important. We shouldn't get carried away too much. Certainly not as an industry, we can't get carried away, and we don't. We stick to what are real numbers, the numbers that actually mean something. Circular economy is really important also for us, which means, for me, it means you design molecules and materials from the beginning so that you can use them in a circular way. We have utilized the oil now as, as raw materials for our plastics since, what, 1940s or so. We've almost perfected the way that we do that. Uh, that's a problem for us now, because now we have new ways of, of, of making plastics, bio-based materials. We can make plastic out of woods, we can do that in a whole variety of different ways, but we can't yet make it very cost-efficient because of the fact that we've utilized or we've, we've perfected the, the fossil base. So that's one of the things that we can speed up. We need, I would think, we need consumers' help. First of all, we need consumers' help in not throwing the stuff in the oceans from the beginning, which is a key problem. And I could throw myself, my own personal story into, the, into this equation, because one of my best friends was actually uh, the first, he wrote the first report in Nature on microplastics in the ocean. This was now 15 or 20 years ago almost. And I think that, that is something that, independent on fossil-based or, or, or bio-based uh, solutions, that's a, a, a really important uh, issue to solve for us. Don't know really how to solve that. But think circular, think design to, to reuse, and, and think in cost-efficient ways, utilizing the end consumer's need to really want those type of, of products that are designed for the circular economy, where bio-based uh, origin is, is a, a key feature. That's it for now. Okay, thank you very much. Um, how is it, Fernando, from, from the perspective of the World Economic Forum, is there any sort of anything you would say that needs to be done, anything that is going to be done by itself? Is the power of innovation, the power of business, of markets, going to drive the solution? Or is there anything we need to imply from governments or by force? Or how do we change minds? 
I also have to say, don't don't be too depressed because right. uh, there's there are plenty. Even even the first few minutes of this conversation, uh, there are plenty of uh, of good opportunities. I'm, I'm going to mention two. I'm going to start with the with a small one, which is the Ocean Cleanup Project. Many of you study innovation. Many of you follow innovation systems and spend time reading innovation literature and highlight the value of the first mover. And we learn a lot from first movers. So yes, three tons per week is perhaps an insignificant number compared to what is really being dumped out there. But it's a tremendous effort to come out there, a lot of courage to come and say, we have to do as opposed to we need to continue thinking about this. So I'll start with that one. There's plenty that will follow that. Um, in one of the early pages of the same report that you quoted at the beginning, there were uh, five or six recommended actions. And here's another five or six reasons for optimism. So what, what can be done? One is um, we need new dialogue mechanisms. Um, when we started this work in collaboration with the Ellen MacArthur Foundation around 2014, 2015, there was actually no good platform to hold an, an informed, pro-positive dialogue on an upcoming issue. Um, we have now, uh, four or five years later, seen that a number of these coalitions that have started um, actually are benefiting from a dialogue approach and from bringing different stakeholders at the table. So that's, that's one. The second was um, a global plastics protocol. Um, and, and here, one important element is we need not to be fearful of rigor. Um, there's a huge risk in oversimplifying the word plastic. Uh, yes, this is a physical property that became a noun, and it's becoming a bad noun, but, uh, but we need to really approach this with rigor. The same scientific and, and technological rigor that exists in this room and in your organizations um, to be applied to the end of life of these fantastic materials, I would agree. In terms of performance per, per cent or per dollar, um, this, is, this is way up there. And, and the last one is, is stakeholder engagement. And I think this is where uh, all of you are, in a way, responding to this call. It's when, when a system is very complex, um, and if you think topology is no longer linear or circular, this is a very complex issue. Uh, uh, complex systems need multiple interventions at different points. And multiple interventions by different stakeholders in different ways are exactly what are, what's going to be needed to, to address this and to move it as a complex system. So it's actually looking good because a lot of these things are happening. Um, when we think of one of those elements when we say innovation, I'm going to go back to what Daniela said. Um, I'm actually quite hopeful after seeing a, a number of these, of these exciting startups, a lot of the, of the impetus that is there behind sustainable chemistry, behind actually improving the world. So we don't need a burning platform. We have it. We don't need, I don't think we have a lack of talent. There's plenty of money uh, that has been pledged. So what is it? And I think this is a call for us to rethink our approach to addressing this issue uh, that perhaps be a good opportunity to unlock what can happen in terms of economic opportunity and, and really addressing the environmental concerns that come with it. Okay, thank you, Fernando. It's getting more cheerful for me here right good. now. Good. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you very much. Um, I'm getting less depressed. So, uh, Fritz, is it really that um, optimistic? You see it the same way? Well, the first thing is, well, it, the title of this is New Plastics Economy. Well, we are in the middle of a plastics economy, yeah? We have, well, if we continue like that, people call our, ge our geological age already Anthropocene. Well, if we continue like that, they will not call it Anthropocene, they will call it Plasticcene. Yeah, because the whole, the sediment layers will be full of plastics, yeah? So, the good news is, we know how to deal with it. And of course, the tight, the new plastics economy, what should it be? It should be circular. We went into a plastics economy full speed and still do it, but it's not circular. And that is the, and that is the problem. The good news about plastics is it's a very good material to be circular. Yeah, so it has all the potential to be a, a, a real circular material. And uh, so, but we need to really look at the entire value chain of it. So let's say not only at the waste, which is very important, we need to clean up, but also at the front, you know, uh, we need new plastics which are much better recyclable. Yeah, new composite materials which we can really recycle. 
We need to look at the, at, the, uh, at the energy side. The good news is I think all the solutions and the different part of the value chains are already there. So we can solve the problem. Of course, the problem is what is already in the, let's say, in, in the oceans. Yeah? But everybody needs to work together. It's the big ones, it's the startups, yeah? it's the policy. Well, some things very simply need to be forbidden. Yeah? Well, why do we need microplastic in a shampoo? It's nonsense. Forbidden, but legally forbidden, that's the only solution for that, yeah? It's absolute nonsense, yeah? And so we need legislation. Chemical recycling is probably a, f a very important thing in the future, but at the moment, it's economically not viable. Oil is too cheap. We need, probably need a rate, a recycling rate, let, let's say, which, how much, let's say, of the recycled plastic needs to go into the new one. And this needs to be regulated by law. Then probably the chemical recycling products have a chance to get into the market. We as IAC3, well, we work on both sides. I think we need, as Fernando said, a global dialogue. Yeah, because at the moment the plastic discussion goes left, right and center in all crazy directions. And we need to really rationalize this debate. This is where we will work on as IAC3. On the other hand, we need, let's say, boots on the ground get our feet dirty, we will go, let's say, uh, with partners to Nigeria and demonstrate in one of these rivers, which are, which are the most polluting rivers, how the problem can be solved. Yeah? With innovation, but also with concrete cleaning up. And if you want to be a real optimistic, look in the room. This day is reason for optimism. There are so many young talents here with new ideas, and I think this is a real reason for optimism. Can I add something to what... Thank you very much, Fritz. Yes, Daniela, Daniela please add. Fritz, I thought you were going to mention it, but since you didn't, I will. The other thing we need is an appropriate investing mechanism yep. in these innovations. Uh, we're looking at a problem that is massive and very sizable. And investing as a simple venture investment in these individual companies is not going to solve it. So as somebody who's, who's been in this space for a long time, we think a lot about what is the appropriate level of investment so that we can create a, a strong pipeline of innovation that will solve the problems that plastic may potentially create or is creating. And we're arriving at the, at the understanding that we need a blend of public and private capital. The public capital that will de-risk the initial innovation, specifically addressed towards critical priority areas of plastics. And then the, pub, the, the private capital, the venture capital, who will come and invest in applications and help commercialize. And just as an example, you're all wearing internet-enabled devices right now. The IoT revolution officially happened in 2015, by which point everybody was carrying two or three internet-enabled devices. So in order to make it more fun for you, the next thing we will do before they have the chance to make a last wish to this audience, um, regarding the topic, of course, um, there will be speakers, speakers' corners outside, where each one of them will be standing within the next 10 minutes, and you'll get the chance to meet them and talk to them. So when we get outside, please follow them to their desks. There will be moderators on the desk. You can place your questions there and start a discussion for the next half an hour with each one of them. You can change desks, of course. There are no tickets to buy or to, to draw. Um, there's no line to wait. You only have to wait until you can place your question. OK? So before we do that, um, last thing, you have this talent out there, you have this community out there. This is a once, uh, this rarely happens that you have all these experts and all that collective intelligence in front of yourselves. If you had a wish you could make, one, to this community, what would it be regarding new plastics economy, Fritz? Well, from my side, well, I, I, uh, let's say our institution is is trying to develop a fund. And my wish would be also to the other investors, don't only look at the risk. Look at the opportunity and take a bit, a let's say, higher risk, because this is a global problem which we need to solve together. And uh, let's say so in this respect, I think you probably take a higher risk when you invest because it's for the good of the humankind. Thank you. Fernando, what would your wish be? Um, to, to breathe. <laughs> <laughs>
um, catch a breath because uh, I think this, this is extremely important to make sure that we continue raising awareness about an issue but uh, balancing the risk of continue polarizing the debate and not walking to a, to a collaborative solution. To make sure that we don't um, curb supply of an economic system uh, at the risk of choking economic development um, simply because it is a material. I think it's, it's a matter of looking at this from, from both perspectives. And last, to make sure that uh, when we think of alternative, bio-based, etc., uh, we keep in mind that, uh, that there is some critical performance that these materials have given us um, that cannot be sacrificed simply because we think that biodegradation means disappearing. Uh, that we need to really get to the details of this. Thank you very much. Magnus, what so, would your wish be? Yeah, so I spend a lot of time uh, with my colleagues in, in the company uh, to really emphasize the importance of when you shape a really sharp research question. I, I talk about two transformations here. One is the transformation of money to knowledge. That transformation is called research. You transform money into knowledge. And the other transformation I talk about is, is the one where you transform that knowledge back into money. In this case, you can broaden it, of course. It doesn't have to be money. It can be for the better of mankind. You transform money to knowledge, and you use that knowledge for the best of mankind. Now, in order to be very effective when it comes to transforming the knowledge to, to, uh, to, to services, if you like, you have to define a really, really sharp research question. As a standalone business, you rarely succeed with that. As a government entity, you rarely succeed with that. As a company, you rarely succeed with that. But when you join forces across all three, taking consumer um, aspects into account, that's when you can start to become really, really sharp. That's when you can make most use of the money, taxpayers' money, and that's where you can actually define the, the, the content of a research program or innovation program so you can succeed. So very effective and lots of discussion across the important stakeholders. Spend a lot of time in that before you embark on something big. Thank you very much. Daniela, what would your wish be? To all the entrepreneurs in the room, I would say think big. Start small, move fast, and break things. This is the only way to move forward. And to all the investors, I will say this is a risky endeavor. Don't get into it if you don't have a stomach for it. There will be failure, there will be loss, and there will be major gain to be had. Let's give them a big hand. Thank you very, very, very much. So just, just, uh, just before we move outside, I, I, I get a call on my headset. There is none, of course. Um, there's an announcement to be made, and I, I want Holger to uh, come on stage, please. There's an announcement for Fritz and Holger to be made. Everybody else, stay on stage, please, before we move outside together. Well, well, Holger, this is, this is the time. Well, um, first of all, to thank you. Well, I'm very proud to be here. Well, I think we, you need first a very big applause for what you did, let's say, today. <laughs> We are very proud to be a, a what is it, double diamond sponsor? <laughs> we are very proud to be this in this conference, which is really a breakthrough and which is more than needed. Yeah, and uh, that is why we said, Olga and I, we said, well, look, this is something which is where next time we don't want to be a diamond sponsor, we want to be a real partner. And I think this is so good that we bring this to the world. We don't do this in Frankfurt only, we do this in other places of the, let's say, of the, let's say, of the world, and we intensify this because I think this is a role model which needs to really go out in the, in the world. That is why Holger and I, let's say, signed an MOU this afternoon to be a partner, to bring the European Chemistry Partnering even more forward. Thank you very much, Holger. I have nothing more to add. I'm so happy that we signed this MOU and just can say again, chemistry and the chemistry between us makes the world go round. Thank you. And I hope that everybody is, is, let's say, with us in this endeavor. And uh, we already have, let's say, a partnership with, uh, let's say, with Daniela. We are very happy about this. Yeah, 
I, I think I'm pretty sure that the three of us will <laughs> really, uh, really move. And uh, well, we are happy to discuss with you outside and, uh, and then have a glass of wine, I know? Yes, of course. <laughs> and a beer. And, and, and a beer. <laughs> Thanks.